and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken Watch ye therefore, and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of Man. Right now, a wild scientific phenomenon you may never have heard of. The sun is, uh, well, flipping out. The magnetic fields are switching, meaning the North Pole and the sun becomes the South Pole, vice versa. According to NASA, the effect will be felt across the entire solar system. Let's talk about that, what it means for us here on Earth. Joining us once again is Corey Powell, editor at large for Discover Magazine. So when it flips on the sun, it flips throughout the magnetic field throughout the entire solar system. But what does it mean for Earth? What do we see and feel here? Right, so the, the sun is active all the time. The sun is like a magnetic bottle. So when the sun flips, that actually means all that magnetic, magnetic activity is flipping with it. So the, there's, a, there's an electrical current that runs through the whole solar system, including past the planet. All that stuff flips upside down. This only happens at a time when the sun is particularly active. Which is now. Which is right now. Uh, th so this, this, kind of, this kind of flip happens every 22 years. Are we going to see you know, some climate change here, more clouds, auroras? What about auroras? Right. So this is a time of high solar activity when you see uh, exactly those kinds of things. You see auroras. Uh, there's a greater risk of, of blackouts. Uh, there's, there's just a constant low-level damage that happens to our blackouts. Blackouts really? to the power satellites. Um, this is a time when major activity is more likely than it is at other times. All right. Now, severe solar superstorms, which are different, what could that do? Right. So the, the sun is continuously disrupting the space around the Earth. It's what they call space weather. And ordinary space weather and a superstorm is sort of the difference between, you know, a bad, a bad thunderstorm and a hurricane. Uh, Ordinary space weather, just the stuff that happens every year that we don't even pay any attention to, costs something between 500 million and a billion dollars a year in damage to power lines and to just satellites. Just in the U.S. Just, just in the U.S. And that's just uh, that's just an ordinary average year. That's averaged out. A superstorm. The last really serious superstorm that we had was in 1859. Unfortunately, you know there wasn't much technology around at the time. If something like that happened again, uh, the National Research Council estimates it could cause one to two trillion dollars of damage just in the United States. You could have blackouts worldwide? You could have, you could have blackouts, not just blackouts, but you could have blackouts that would last for months or even for a year because what would happen is it could blow out basically all the power line transformers at once. People couldn't survive. Some people couldn't. Well, th that's why those damage numbers are so high because it's not just that you lose the power. Imagine you have a blackout that lasts past the point where your hospital generators are, are kicking in or, or it knocks out you know, all, all, of your, all of your financial trading markets. Uh, that's why there's a very, very active effort right now to do much better space weather forecasting because if you can predict these things, understand why the sun is flipping. I mean, we're not expecting one of these solar superstorms anytime soon, are we? Uh, it, things, it, statistically, probably not. Uh, they're, they're, we don't really know yet how to predict them. And what you really want to do is, you know, the cost of, th these are, this is a classic, you know, high impact, low, low frequency kind of event. Right. You want to know how to forecast it because, you know. If it just, happens, we can prepare for it. If it happens, we can prepare for it. And, and just, you know, just saving the, that year to year constant erosion. Right. You know, who pays attention to space weather? The answer is industry does. I'm out of time. Corey Powell, yes. good to see you as always.